And uh, this is actually a follow-up to last year's presentation, which was the initial one at uh, Mac, Na uh, excuse me, Naples Mac Friends User Group. And uh, uh, I didn't think it was going to be enough. So I mentioned to George about a month ago, I don't think we're going to have a full session. And then I got preparing for it. And uh, I had 15 slides. I had 36 about a week and a half ago. And I said, it'll, it'll take way too long. So uh, there's a lot to car play. And it is a feature that makes us safe when we drive cars. And we have to uh, navigate at the same time we're in the car alone. So uh, there's a lot to cover. And about this, halfway through the sixth slide, I, I start asking a few questions. That would be a good time to begin to throw questions at me, but let me get through the first part first. So, uh, with the update is really related to the iOS. Uh, the iOS CarPlay works off of this, and this is a, uh, it's not an app in the, in the iOS, it's just part of the iOS. So everybody that's got iOS 12 has CarPlay uh, connection capability. Your car may not but this does. And with 12.2, I'll mention it now, um, there's a few changes that took place because I downloaded it Monday, I was up north still, and I saw some changes in the display on one of the cars I have. So I know there's things that change, they're very subtle, but every time you get a new update with an iOS uh, uh, version, you're probably gonna get some changes to CarPlay. And I think when they do 13, probably announced at Apple's uh, uh, developer conference in June, they'll have even more, and I understand it's going to get more user-friendly, more driver-friendly. So, uh, app, this CarPlay brings iOS to your car's information system safely. That's important. Safety is a big function on this. And uh, it takes that information system and Apple all of a sudden controls it whenever you hook up the CarPlay side. Uh, and that's a big feature because it keeps your face out of the, somewhere on the dashboard or in the cockpit somewhere when you're trying to figure out where the next turn is and so on. And you look it down, it's, it's not safe. Better to be looking that way. And uh, if you've got a display that happens to be the newer ones are coming up, they're, they're on top of the dashboard. Uh, that makes it very easy to just glance a little bit and see the road. Uh, the apps that uh, are used are the phone, very convenient, very well connected. These are Apple uh, apps. The message system, uh, music, uh, iTunes music, Apple music is extremely well integrated, and finally the maps. And that's where the big change is with iOS 12 is in the maps side. The features are, uh, can control Apple CarPlay through the Surrey voice control. Every car that has Apple CarPlay, you can control through Surrey. Um, Apple Music I mentioned, it's really a plug and play system. You're not using the, the processor, all of a sudden, once you connect the lightning cable to the phone, is in this. It's not in the, in the car. It's in this. So you control this. That controls the car flip. Um, iOS, the benefit, one of the features is it's a familiar interface. We're used to seeing the icons for Apple and how the Apple system works. That makes using CarPlay very friendly and very easy. Apple's been very good at that over the years. They've always connected the software with the hardware and uh, the MacBooks and the MacBook Pro and almost the watch is a big benefit to the CarPlay because if you have an Apple Watch on the way down here, it's getting haptic taps saying time to turn, time to turn. It doesn't say anything, it just taps your wrist. Um, you have access to many apps, not a lot of apps, but many apps, 
and now many more third-party apps. That is not Apple apps. iOS 12 brought around uh, connection wirelessly, primarily through Bluetooth, although I've looked at my phone and I see somehow I'm connected to, I have a BMW X1 that we got recently, and it's my wife's car, and it's got a Wi-Fi connection. I'm not sure what that is. I haven't quite figured that out. But I know they connect pretty much universally through Bluetooth. Uh, the third-party apps, particularly in the map side, are Google Maps and Waze. And that was a question at the, the first presentation about when is that going to happen? I mentioned there was a way to, and I didn't promote it, but to, to jailbreak your phone and get into Waze and to Google Maps. But uh, the demand was too great, and Apple did it. The ways to connect are, are by the lightning cable. You plug it into the USB, and then you plug your lightning in, into the bottom of the phone. And I think it's the five iPhone 5 and greater or later uh, are the ones that can connect. And now wirelessly, which um, I just recently I've seen it on some of the, the information on, on setting up the phone or setting up CarPlay is all you do is hit Siri and somehow it starts to connect through obviously Bluetooth. But a lot of this stuff varies by manufacturer. And Jeep has one way, Acura has another way, uh, Ford, GM, they all have different, and this is one of the unusual, this is one of the big changes in, um, in Apple's ecosystem. And that is, Apple has traditionally, Steve Jobs was a, a big promoter of, it. we're going to take the whole system and control it. But Tim Cook has recently, and that was in the announcement here Monday, you can see that he's beginning to get into uh, uh, services and benefits that include not only Apple products, but other products. And a good example is CarPlay. You can't control Mercedes-Benz and how this is going to integrate. You can't control Ford and how it's going to integrate. And that makes it... Uh, a variety, of, there's a wide variety of ways to connect, but there, once you get in, the base is there. Apple CarPlay really takes over that information system. And then you can disconnect, and then you're into the, the, the Ford Sync system, or you're into a Mercedes system. But that's, that creates some confusion, and that's probably why there's a lot of people here trying to figure out how CarPlay works. Uh, less standardization, uh, experience continues to get better, and you just got to keep trying. I mean, what didn't work uh, three weeks ago, I now see how it's working, and I didn't understand the three weeks ago. Of course, I get into it a lot in the past month. Very good is. So, how many people use, this is just the iPhone, not connected, you know, connected to CarPlay or not. How many people use their phone inside their car? Okay, how many, of all those that are up, how many use Apple's uh, CarPlay? So there's a number of hands that use the phone but don't connect to Apple CarPlay. It's not in my car. It's not in your car. <laughs> Any other reasons? What, what year is your car? It's a 2018, it's a Toyota, and oh, uh, my son-in-law was telling me it was there, because he rented the car, it was there, and we went and looked, and then I looked it up, and it's in some Toyotas for 2018, and it's not in others, so it's very, but yeah. apparently in 2018, maybe it's in all. You're right, that's one of the big ones that, that I noticed that changed. Last year, Toyota didn't have it, this year, Toyota's got it in a 19, and when I yeah, they grow told up, us they had it, and then we got it. Yeah, yeah, right. But I'll also explain 
Uh, there may be a way for you to get it. Uh, not easy, but okay. I'm jumping to the website here. This is Apple's website. I want to kind of explain some of the features, the basics. Um, they talk about it being, uh, its line is the ultimate auto uh, co-pilot. Um, might be the autopilot something. I was thinking of that in the future. There's a, where a lot of uh, driverless cars out of the consumer electronics show. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, a lot of consumer at the consumer electronics show there were a lot of uh, driverless cars, and I think this may be one of the ways we control it. Uh, they were showing you put in where you want to go, and the car will drive you there in its own fashion. And um, so, in this section here, this this is uh, Apple CarPlay's website. And these are uh, apps that are Apple CarPlay only. Uh, Apple built these and they have them. These are the more recent apps. That's the time of day. Uh, that's the strength of the signal uh, of your phone. And that's the type of signal, LTE. Soon you'll see 5G there. And that's a home button, which is probably becoming uh, less used in might be extinct sometime in the future. Uh, you can control it. This is, I think this is a VW. And you can control it by the knob sometimes. I'll just go up here. These are the control ways by Siri, which is the easiest way, especially with the Apple apps. You can tell it, ask it what you want or tell it what to do. Um, touch. Is very convenient. Uh, that's what. That's my favorite way, especially when it's higher on the windshield. Touch, and then the other way is the knob, turning it, and that highlights a particular app or feature, and then you have to press it. Um, and some have touch and controls together. Maps is the, one of the biggest features. Uh, that people use CarPlay for. And I'll describe this thing here. Uh, this is, you can see it's quite detailed because you got houses listed in there. And many, especially in the bigger cities, uh, you got the house details or the building details. We're on US 101 North. We're about to get off. This is uh, uh, the lane indication, the lane support. This one says you're going to get off to the right at exit 393 onto Great America Parkway and you're on 101 North. Um, this is the time of arrival, which is 10 minutes from now. It's 1.6 miles. You're not going very fast. It's like six or seven miles an hour. Uh, but that orange means there's delay there. There's a slope. And it, it you know, Anybody know how, how that comes about, how that delay gets put up there? It's that Apple reads the number of cars that have car that have their phones in there, not just CarPlay, just your phone could be sitting there. And it sees that you're going way slower than you should be, so it puts an orange one in there. And on the other side, it's red. You're not going that way, but it's red now on the other side. That means it's, it's quite a bit slower there. Um, and uh, other features are, this is the bird's eye view. When you go higher with the minus, or you get closer with the plus, and then you can move this, this map this way or that way. When you press that, touch that, uh, you can take that map and move it left or right, up or down to see where you're going. Or you can hit overview, and that gives you the, the whole route. In, in one picture. And it means you want to stop navigating. When you're getting close and you know exactly where you're going and it keeps talking to you because you got to make this turn and that turn. You don't even, I just turn it off. Oh. There we go. And uh, this here is the voice. 
you can turn the voice off. This here is uh, the guidance and it talks to you. You can press that and you can get uh, no guidance. But it'll still give you the indication of when you're going to turn, which is nice. I use that a lot. Uh, the same features over here. These are the recent uh, apps that you've used. Phone, very functional, very easy to use. And uh, I don't like the keypad. It's tough to press the keypad and try to put the dial on, uh, press a number in there. Um, and then this feature is for like for uh, merging calls, adding an additional call. I pull over if I were doing that. Mute is just that you mute. You just listen to what's what's being said. But that works extremely well. And messages we talked about that the last time, but very basically, um, you can you can turn messages off. By the way, in your when it says I'm driving, I think that's in one of the settings. I'm, when I'm driving, I don't want any messages. So that would come up, but you have it on, so uh, you press that and it'll say, uh, you've got a message from Bob Lockhart, uh, do you want to listen to it? Yes. You can just hit Siri or you press that arrow and uh, it says what the message is. Do you want to reply? Yes. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Or it says, what do you want to say? I'll be there in 15 minutes. Uh, you say that, it repeats it to you. You want to send it? Yes, and that's it. Works extremely well. <laughs> music is well integrated, and if this is Apple Music that's well integrated. Apple, uh, the one that you pay the features for. It. Now here are the. This is the today's website, and these are the apps that are available. And some of these are Apple. Some of these are not Apple. Um, you can see that it's opened up the system to a lot more than just uh, Apple Music. It's all kinds of audio stuff. This is mainly audio, except for the, the WhatsApp. That's like a, a social thing. I don't use it. I'm not sure what it is. But it's a, it's a, a social network thing. And um, in, in general, one of the comments is it's much easier to use the Apple uh, apps that it is to use uh, other ones. And Surrey sometimes doesn't work with the other ones. In other words, that uh, button on your steering wheel is a, a voice connection to the information system. When Apple, when there's an Apple, when you connect the Apple CarPlay and you're using an Apple app, it controls it. But with, like, say, box or something. May not control it. That Siri may not get the response that you're looking for. And that's what you've got to do to learn it. Now the big changes with Google Maps and Waze. Uh, how many how many use Apple Maps when they use CarPlay? How many use something else? You use both? I use Waze. Waze. Wait. Google. 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 Google Maps. Oh, just the navigation of the car. What? The one that comes with the car. Oh yeah, that's Apple. Oh, the one that comes with a car. Right. Well, that's that's interesting because I've always found those things very hard to. You must have a car that you're very familiar with that you can use for a long time. Anything I use, easy. Yeah. Because uh, I have. You know, we have two or three cars at any one time, and yeah, I'll hardly ever figure them out. And CarPlay just solved that with the map system. So when I was an Apple map guy. And then well, when Waze and Google came in, and particularly preparing for this, I said, I'm going to try them all. And uh, this is my personal feeling. The benefit of Waze is that you get this social input that says, Police are up here. There's an accident up here. There's construction there, or there's someone's pulled over on the side for some reason. That's a nice thing, and it warns you about that. Um, uh, it's 
especially when the police got are set up for it. So you're aware of that. Google, on the other hand, seems to have the most in, very intuitive and very informative. An example, last Tuesday I was going, I was up north and I was going skiing and I said, uh, I need directions to Hollymont ski area. And uh, the response was, well, it'll take you an hour to, an hour and one minute to get there, but you know it's not open. <laughs> so that's why I did. I got there early. Yes. Uh, Mitch, uh, you know, the problem with those other ones that I have, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but when I use Waze or Google Maps, my watch isn't telling me when to turn. That's one of the problems, right? Yeah. That's, the, that's a big problem. Because the watch, that happy touch, I mean, you can have that map on all day long. That happy touch tells me what I need to do. Right. It, yeah. If you're on a long trip, then you you go about 60, 70 miles down the express, down the throughway, or down the interstate, and then you might forget about it. It, it does tell you. It does. Apple Maps tells you inside the car. I don't know about these other ones. I, I haven't had them that long. Yes. What is the cost of these subscriptions? These are subscriptions, I think. Right? Well, the maps are. I, as far as I can see, there's no cost. Not any car plate. CarPlay is, is part of the iOS system. Okay. It's not an app, and it's automatic. I'll show you how to get into it shortly. But it puts it on your um, screen? Pardon? It puts the maps right on your screen in your car? Yes, it puts the maps right on your head. <laughs> a new Toyota is open. Well, no, that's that's yeah, right. uh, yes. But you have to have cell service to make it work, don't you? Have to, like, you, have you have to have cell service. If you run out of cell service, it won't update. It won't. It, 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 except for one. And I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, so here's the car play. Here's the car's lineup. Oh, by the way, this Baidu is a, a Chinese map. So this doesn't work well for, for us. <laughs> I can't read it. Yes. Manually walk. Uh, but I have noticed that these are all, these are the manufacturers that are uh, building models that have CarPlay. Not all their models, some of their models. How can you tell if your model is, uh, what? how can you tell if your particular car model is ready for? I'll show you that shortly. Thank you. So, but the point I want to make here is I've noticed that the, that these car manufacturers have, have different attitudes towards integrating this. And it seems like the, the car manufacturers that want to control their cars, just like Apple wants to control its ecosystem, aren't happy about putting somebody else's system in their car. Especially on the high end, where they want to give you a total experience and they're, yeah, they're controlling everything. And, uh, so I see some of the high ends are, are, aren't as intuitive or, or applying uh, Apple CarPlay to their capabilities. Um, on the other hand, uh, the longest names, the uh, names that have got in early and have been consistent are uh, General Motors, Ford, the first sync system, Honda, and uh, was another one in can't remember. But those those cars are really all in on Apple CarPlay. Um, this is for the 19, uh, 2018 Toyota. They have aftermarket systems. And that means aftermarket systems are always scared to live with Jesus out of them. But these things are all have fittings in them, and there's very easy fittings, and they take out the current screen and they pop in an Apple Car or a one of these. Alpine is the high end, Pioneer, Sony, and so on, and they and they use that. You use that system, and it takes most of the features of the car that are already there, plus that adds Apple CarPlay, and it's 
from what I see, it works very real well. I get on YouTube and I look at their presentations. And I'll show you the range of pricing for these things. Oh, there's the compatibility of uh, the phones. And uh, there's I, iPhone 5 and above. There's a lot of them. So here's a question. And the question being answered, let's go to the Toyota one. Toyota was the, one of the new ads this year, by the way. And uh, this is alphabetical. Toyota. And you can see that, you can all read that? It's all 2019, and then they got a 2020 in there to make it early. Um, anybody got a question about Mercedes? Mercedes. What? That's a, they're kind of, Awkward at this. I know from experience. What do you have? Uh, 2017 C class. 2017 C. A B. Looks like I can leave. Is that right? It's a CLA. CLS and CLA. I need a 2017. What's that? That's a 19. It's I need a 19 C class. I need a 17. <laughs> oh yeah, 19 was the first year for the C class. Thanks. Right. Right. Yeah. I'll see you guys. You need a so, <laughs> well, well, you're gonna see what you're missing. Though, that's for sure. And but on the other hand, there might be a way, and I'll show you that if I can. Wait, how about Chrysler Pacific? All right. Uh, I'm sure, I got everything covered here. Manufacturer Toyota. Oh, the BMW I mentioned. Uh, car place are like a second citizen of BMW. It requires to purchase it on this X1, which is probably the lowest end. BMW that you can get. I had a, I said, I want to get Apple Car, I won't buy a car that I can't have Apple CarPlay with. And they said, you have to get navigation, BMW's navigation. <laughs> and that economically, that didn't make sense to me. But it, it's, it's disappointing, but that's what I did. I got the name, because it had other features that were, and that's what they explained. It's got all these other features that your CarPlay uses, so, you need this. So I just bought it. And uh, then you dig a little deeper, and it's the only car that has an annual fee. Each year, it costs $80. Except the first year, it's free. And normally, I bought the CarPlay feature in other cars, and it's anywhere from $300 to $700 to have the capability of getting CarPlay. So the BMW was one in, in which you bought their navigation and these other features. It was like a $1,500 add-on. Um, but I have to pay $80 a month, a year, $80 a year, beginning of the second year. And if you keep your car for two, two or three years, it's, it's a deal, actually, relative to speed. It's not that expensive. As long as they keep it connected and up-to-date, that's great. <laughs> but on the other hand, I plug it in, and you can't find the CarPlay icon, which is that symbol that you saw at the beginning of the triangle. You can't find it. You wiggle around, then all of a sudden, after doing a few things, it pops up in the lower left, way down at the top. And it's, so it's second season. Yeah, yeah. That's part of the relationship. Every many other cars, it's. All you do is, especially with the new wireless one, you just hit the Siri uh, button on the steering wheel, the voice button on the steering wheel, and it starts connecting when you're on uh, what the new wireless system. At least that's the other car. Right? Okay. Oh, lost this. So let's go to the next one. Now what I want to do is uh, 
show you how to set it up on the phone. And this will take a second. This is George's recommendation. It works real well. Okay, perfect. And now to get into setting up your car or, or making changes to your display, this is how you set it up under Settings, General, and CarPlay. So there are settings on my phone. And the fourth partition down that is, it's right there, General. And then second partition down is CarPlay. This is, this is not an app. And this is showing that well, I lost my battery. How about that? Um, I have always have a backup. There's the uh, uh, the voice button. That's the Siri button, or the information system uh, talking too. But when the car plays attached, that's Siri. And uh, if your car supports wireless car play, press and hold the voice button um, on your steering wheel to start the car play setup. The newer cars, and the, some of the 18s, many of the 19s are now going to wireless, and that's all you got to do is press that button. Um, and then it's got the cars app, and I've added a few cars here as I rent it and connect it to other ones. Just leave them up here so that you can see them. And here's the one I drive the most. And this is a, uh, it's an Acura RDX this year. And um, this is the first year that it's had CarPlay. Um, you can see the ones I have there. And the, the pippers on the bottom show that there's a pipper right there. Well, in any case, a little like that, there's more than one space, and you can see that you've got more than one there. There's eight icons per page, more pages, and anything that's got a minus in means that it's, uh, you can, it's, you can take it off of the display. Anything that doesn't have an icon is apples, and you can't take them off. They're in there. They're on there. So if I want to uh, let's say, get rid of uh, simple radio, go like that, and it's off. And when you get in your car next time, that's not there. Or if I want to add the NBA, put it right there. And now it's got the minus. Um, it says, touch and hold any icon screen to drag it like I just showed you. Allow car play while locked. And I think that means, although it's been tricked on me lately, allow car play while locked means if your phone is locked and you plug it in, it should still run car play. Um, sometimes it doesn't work and I have to look down. And mine's got facial recognition and I look at it and then it goes back on. It's a weird thing. Wayne, there's a question. Yes. When um, when you go to that location on your iPhone, then will it show you all you you were moving them in that little white box ring? For example, you just put simple radio down there. But would you have seen you have two pages of however many up to eight? Is it going to show you all the ones that you can pick from? That's a good question, and that's. Uh, I mean, that work on car That work. is populated. That white bar mm -hmm. is populated by any app that's on your phone that's CarPlay capable. Okay. So, so you find, you know which ones are going to work because they're all going to be in the white bar. The answer to that question is you don't know. <laughs> oh. I, I, and it's really something that I'll show you a good example. 
Oh, by the way, let me just finish this side of it. Um, so that was that, and here's here's the BMW, and it's pretty much the same same concept. Um, it says when your phone is nearby and you start your car, CarPlay will start automatically. That was interesting. That's the wireless one. In fact, I was testing something, and I. And the BMW, which is wireless, the only car I have is wireless. And I, I couldn't get it to con change or anything. Well, the problem was it had connected with my wife's phone in the house before oh. it was mine. <laughs> so you run into those wireless issues. Um, I drive in the garage. Yeah, right, it was in the garage. Um, let's get out of this one. Oh. By the way, every everyone has this this BMW or this cars uh, icon, which says "Get me out of CarPlay and into the cars system," so you can use your right. Uh, this is a this is a rental car, and it's a Chevy, and uh, pretty much the same way set up, and. I recommend doing this when you get out of the car, when you say, forget this car, and I forget it, and it's gone. Won't be connected, I can't connect to it. Now, the other comment is here, this other car, that's when you get into a new car and it pops up, it'll, it'll provide you with the instructions on how to connect, how to pair to that car. And you do that a lot with uh, rentals. I have a Hertz um, relationship, and they not too long ago they came up with that. I rent a certain strata of cars, certain rental rate car. I go to the and they all of a sudden have a lot now, which is very nice. Well, maybe 15, 20 cars. You can pick whatever one you want. I take my cable with me and I plug it into the turn the car on, plug into the USB before I uh, pick that car. And if CarPlay shows up, I'm, that it's got one of the big considerations because I usually, through my computer, set up where I want to go, and I log in and I take them and share uh, from the computer to the phone, so I know where the hotel is, I know where my meeting is at, and so on, all loaded in. Yes, sir. I saw the Amazon thing on there. If I'm driving along and my wife orders something on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's uh, that's Amazon Music. Yeah, that's uh, that was Amazon Music, um, and and it works really well. Yes, I listen to Sirius. Sirius. Uh, Sirius Radio. Radio, and and I've not figured out how to control the volume of the uh, navigation versus Sirius. Does anybody have any response to that? He hasn't figured out how to control one volume for navigation versus volume of of uh, the radio system. Yeah. When you're when you're when you're in your navigation and it's starting to talk to you over the radio, then you can that's when you can adjust your uh, raise in and lower the volume. So you right. have to yeah. when and how you can get the navigation to talk. Well, I, I can't show it to you, but on, on the, the, the map for, for CarPlay, for Apple Maps, you hit the, that guidance area, where, remember where the lane was changing, to, you hit that and it'll say, it, it'll automatically tell you when to turn, when the next turn is, okay. and then is when you adjust it. That's oh. how you make the adjustment. You make a talk and then adjusting. Thank you. Fine talks on Michael when she's in the car. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I <laughs> she's not with you, right? I don't know how I got no. this. <laughs> not here today. <laughs> Would an app oh, like Xfinity work on uh, there. Apple? There we go. What's that? Would an app like Infinity um, TV stations, would that work on CarPlay? 
Which one? Oh, yeah, Xfinity. Xfinity. Yeah. Xfinity. Would that work on? Well, I learned a lot from uh, YouTube. And there was one YouTube that when I put CarPlug in, it said, you can jailbreak your car, your CarPlug, jailbreak it. Just put the app and you can start getting videos uh, on, on your CarPlug screen. No, I, I don't think it's very safe. <laughs> you shouldn't be watching uh, television while you're driving. Yes. Question. When you rent a car, does your does it connect your contacts and stuff? Does that get loaded into the um, car system? You know, every manufacturer has a different approach to that. And, you know, it might ask you, can we connect to your contacts? And my answer is no. I don't want to download my contacts on that car. It used to be, uh, for just audio, that was the case. I, I can see this is switching here. I shouldn't be doing that. But it used to be that, just to get audio, that was a while ago. But I think... I don't think that they automatically download, and uh, if, if it wants it, it'll last for it, and I know what my answer is going to be. But that's why I forget the car, too. Um, Here's another question. I, I just had a stupid question. I have my dad's old 2001 Toyota here, but I have a 2018 uh, Subaru Outback up north, with, which I got the multimedia and navigation, enough buttons to have you have an accident the minute you drive out of the driveway. But um, I never know how to get to the hands-free, when I'm talking on the phone, and I have my phone plugged in, and I have a call of contact, but I can't seem to figure out how to get it to be hands-free so I can hear it from the speaker. Does, does your uh, Subaru have CarPlay? I haven't tried it. After okay. this, I'm going to try it. <laughs> well, you can see it. You know, you might have a, a one that hit, that was up there. You said it was an 18 or something like that. Let's yeah. just assume it's an 18 Subaru yeah. Impreza or whatever it is. Yeah. And um, it might have the capability of having CarPlay, but it may have been something that you had to purchase originally. Or Subaru may be able to install it for you. Yeah. And, um, and then it's Surrey automatically. You Surrey get CarPlay in there, it hooks to your phone, and that's one that hasn't changed. You can hit Surrey. You could say, call mom. And if you got mom in your contacts, that, because it's using the phone's contacts. Right. I think, Don, that's the point. Uh, Don is, uh, Surrey uses the phone's database and the phone setting. And it keeps state keeps it in the, doesn't download it to the chip on the car, so you might have more options. The other option is you can go to these aftermarket things and, and install yeah. it. Could be. Yeah, I mean, it has been using my my contacts. I, I guess it downloaded it onto the car system. But then when I ask the car to you know dial somebody, but then when they're talking, I I haven't got them coming out with speaker. This. Yeah, typically you got to use either. The CarPlay system or the information system in the car. Okay. And that Siri button, when you've got CarPlay in, only talks to your phone. Okay. So that's. I'll try it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you have any experience with VPN interfering with CarPlay? With what? V VPN. Do you have a virtual browser? No, I don't have any experience with VPN. I haven't had my phone set up. But that's what I mean. Is it interfering with CarPlay? No, not that I know of. Okay. Right. It's on, but I'm not sure why I turned it on, because I don't have, I haven't purchased a, I don't have a, a VPN capability in my, yeah, back in my network at the house, either house. So that might be a good topical thing. Um, but you said if you're not, if you're not, whether it's cellular, let's say you're going through the Everglades, you can't use it. Is that correct? Can't use what? If you're driving through the Everglades where there's no cellular, um, right. you can't use it. No. Yeah, you can't you can't use that function of the car plate. It has some 
I've noticed it works in tunnels once in a while. I, I can't understand that, but it still knows where we are. I think it does some projection. They may have a relay in the tunnel. Right. Oh, they might have a relay that's in the, in the yeah, that's right. I always think of cells being around, but you could stick them inside a tunnel right. too. Especially when you pay a big fee to get through it. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we're done with this one. How to add. All right. This this is kind of the question of how to add an app. This is about three, four weeks old, and this is uh, nine to five Mac. They've got an app that they've got up um, in my podcast. They have a they have a podcast that gives you up to date daily information on Apple, and it's been very interesting lately. So the number of apps that we saw on Apple's site were a lot less than this one. And this is what 9 to 5 Max says you can get at. And that's part of the question earlier. How do you know which one works? And uh, I'm going to show you this one, Zoom. This is a, a uh, cloud meeting, this is when you want to connect with a bunch of people on your phone. Supposedly it works on CarPlay. But you wouldn't know that from this. There's no indication here that it uh, works with CarPlay, except when you go under the description and you get more, and right there it says works with Apple CarPlay. Now, who would know that? Who would have any idea? So I decided to try it. And I go into the hallway. Oh, I'll show you that. Get this back. <coughs> so I'm in the apps. And there's Zoom. I, I had done it earlier. And you can see Zoom, I, I have already <coughs> loaded this, but I didn't load it. Now, you'll notice earlier that when I was showing you my CarPlay um, section of iOS and the display, Zoom wasn't in there. So I'm going to hit this, and it should download, because we have a, maybe it's going to take too long. But what happens is it populates that white area. This young lady mentioned that earlier. It's the white area. Zoom will be in there. It's going to take too long. I can see this. And all of a sudden it shows up. And uh, that's how you get something in there. It doesn't tell you that. I mean, you can't hardly search on, on any site and find out what definitively works with CarPlay. Um, even Apple's site doesn't show you. But you keep Googling it, you keep searching it, and you find out. Or you look at something that you might think would work. Nothing that's going to distract you. What well, might work and then go into the details. But how does it know to go into the car versus just... It does it. it this, this app that I'm downloading Zoom will come, will be in that white bar that was right below the, the one that, uh, the display bar. What you could add to it, it'll be there and you can put it up. So, if it's an app that I already own that's on my phone, is there a way yeah, to drag you, it? Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're downloading it. Oh, you have to re download right it. You yeah, it it's a free one. That there's probably got in app purchases. The download screen you have up was that from uh, 9 to 5, a listing of all the apps? Yeah, that 9 to 5 had, 9 to 5 Mac had that list. Can you pull that list up again, please? Yeah. See, here's the beginning. Update navigation apps, best, this says best CarPlay. But go to 9 to 5 back, 
and they've got a bunch of things, and this is this is one of them. And uh, app store apps, and then these are the ones that work with CarPlay. And there's more than that. So I did this one. And this one is a GPS app that you can download on your phone. I did it last week. And it is offline. Someone asked about if you can use it offline. This is one app that you can. And this is it's called um, Psychic. And you have to pay for the maps. The whole world was eighteen dollars, and uh, the U.S. was like fourteen or fifteen dollars. So I downloaded it and I added the apps, and I played around with it in Southwest Florida here for the past couple of days. And it works pretty well. Not as good as the other apps, and it's not as intuitive. But I like backup, and I have an iPhone that doesn't have cellular, and I take it when I drive back north. I'll have one app on it sitting there with the, uh, I'll have this app, the side app, with the phone that doesn't have cellular, and then this phone will be connected to the, the, um, the screen, the information system. By the way, I used three apps at once. I did all three. I put in Google, I put in Waze, and I put in uh, uh, Apple Maps, and they, they all t about the same time, they all tell me to turn. It's like an echo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How many pages of, of uh, applications do you have on the? I don't know the answer, but I've uh, I've never gotten to beyond two. Okay. So the answer is probably as many as you can. Uh, Just like our like. Yeah. Yeah. And really, you know. How many can you use? Uh, people who enjoy music, there's a lot of capability there. But this Psychic's a good third party app. Okay. This is an app where this young guy, I thought this was fascinating. This young guy's got a 19 or 2016 Mustang, and he has the sync system in it. And uh, this is too far into it. But, and I'll just pop a few scenes in. Yeah, it takes longer. So he's got this Mustang, and it, Probably better for me to describe it than try to get through this. He's got this Mustang, and he went to, uh, he read about it online, because the 17s that had the CarPlay, the 16s didn't. It's like a 2018 Toyota. Maybe it's got the capability in there, but you got to have the right equipment. So he went to the uh, store and bought this box, and this box is a, uh, a USB connector, and what he does is he goes down there, this, and uh, he takes this thing and pops out his existing USB connector, disconnects it, and then pops this new one in, and he's got CarPlay available. So that's the other thing I wanted to mention is that you may have that capability. Get online. And if you can't do it yourself, find someone that's got a little intuition electronically. All he's doing is popping this out, 
three plugs, pops it back in, sticks it in, and there's CarPlay. And he's excited as could be, just like I would be too. How long's it called? That that that's not a standard. Uh, that's a specific Ford device a month, uh, for that Ford. for that year's car. And well, it was actually for next year's. But he bought next year's device, put it into his existing car, and it worked. And it was 50 bucks. So, oh, he had to download the new firmware, and that's what he's doing here. You tip, you know, you. So the dealer told. You go to, you say, I want my updated sync firmware. Stick your USB thumb drive in, downloads it, put it into that USB that you just put in, and it updates the whole system. Did the, dealer, did the dealer tell him? What's that? Did the dealer tell him about this aftermarket? No, he probably got on, he gets on the, the blogs, you know, the people that own the car. You go say, car play in my 2018 Toyota. And all of a sudden you'll see various discussions and they might give you an idea how to get to it. What did we all do before YouTube? What's that? What did we all do before YouTube? What did we all do to what? Well, my sons, my sons are fanatical. Oh on yeah. YouTube. Right. And uh, oh, on YouTube. Crazy. My couple of my grandkids. That's what they watch. They don't watch CBS, NBC, or anything. They watch YouTube. Because that's what they want to see. Oh, here's this is a, this is a Best Buy website. We're slow here. That's the problem. It's easy, but here's an example of of and this says free installation. This one's a JVC, 6.8 inches, and there's the ratings. And if you've got 85, 85, 4.5 by 85 people to Put input to that, that's pretty good. Some of these have got 101, but you can see the price. Uh, doesn't cost a lot, especially if you have a little older car and you want to get CarPlay capabilities. This is, um, I'm not promoting a Best Buy or anything like that. There's a lot of aftermarket uh, companies around that can do that for you. But uh, that's, that's a real option. If you like the car you're in, you're going to keep it for another five years, this is the way to get car play. And this is a, a lit, oh, this is a little demo of uh, it was, I think it was made in Greece because they checked out the hotel that they were this guy was going to, but this is, oh, there's an example of video on uh, CarPlay. <laughs> this is a BMW, and when I say a second citizen, there's this whole lineup, and this is where the Apple CarPlay stuff comes in, right here at the bottom. And you have to really wiggle around the, to get that to show up. So you go in, and here's Google Maps, and there's Waze. You press Waze, touches Waze, and that's their video. Oh, that was the, this is the social media. It says police, accident, traffic, and hazard. Those, this is when you want to report one. And let's say you look over the side, and you see the, the policeman's there with his radar. You hit that lower right orange one and press police, and everybody who's got ways that goes in that area is getting that. Um, back. And uh, he's just going through this. This is pretty fast. Yeah, this is the where you move the 
This is standard in all of the car play stuff. You move it left and right if you're looking for a specific spot or a specific street. John? Back, and now he's going to switch, I think, yeah. He's going to switch back to Google Maps. This one's in 3D. This is a little different uh, approach, but And this shows, you can get a satellite map, you can take your map so north is up, that's the way I always do it. And the typical avoid stuff, ferries, tolls, and I'm not sure what that one is. But that's all that really, you can't get into settings because it's not blue. Um, so that's that. CarPlay tips. This is what I'm ending with. Use two iPhones for long trips to have a backup capability. Use different apps. How do you locate best the, one of the highest end malls in any town that you're in, any city? It's a tough question because, you know, I want to go to the mall. Surf Church from Apple Store. <laughs> Sir, Apple store nearby. <laughs> uh, that's why you're up here a lot. Too. <laughs> Not anymore. Third party maps app map apps. I was going to kind of show it in there. It didn't have that. But when you want to talk to it, you can't use the Surrey button. At least the, the ones that I get. You can't the ones that I've experienced. You can't use the Surrey button. What you have to use is you find the microphone on that app, either Google or Waze. There's a microphone either at the top or the bottom or the side somewhere. You press that, all of a sudden it's got a red glow on a microphone, and then, uh, I don't know if you touch it or you touch it again, or I think it's waiting for, uh, find me the nearest Apple store. And that's how you get it. You can't use the Surrey button on the steering wheel to do it when you CarPlay's engaged and you're going to a third party app. You can, you can jailbreak to get video. We talked about that yeah. one. You can jailbreak your car, CarPlay. Go on YouTube, jailbreak to get, let's say, uh, some video capability. It'll, they'll show you how to do it. I don't encourage it. And mentioned earlier, if you're thinking about you didn't see Tesla on that list. Tesla's not on there. That's kind of disappointing. And I'll just finish with what CarPlay means. I didn't know. Okay, so So here's a fella who was who recently bought a Tesla, and right here it says it says my Model S. The best car I've ever owned, hands down, but CarPlay is convenient enough that you won't buy another Tesla unless they get CarPlay. And that's the message that's been around, and that's why it went from, when I first looked at for CarPlay, I say, does your car have CarPlay capability? He said, what? <laughs> huh. that, that was four years ago. And uh, that drove the market. Now there's 500 models that have CarPlay capability in in the world. That's the world. But many, many. Can you go around it, Wayne? That concludes the presentation. But questions? Oh, I just wanted to comment. Uh, I went to Nissan, and I actually have a Murano that has uh, CarPlay. But I thought, well, I'm going to go to Infinity because that's the upscale, yeah. and I'll see what they have. And I walked in, and I said, well, these do have CarPlay. And I think he says, no, none of our cars have CarPlay. You buy. Um, yeah. And that's typical because the high end. Yes. And, and same with Lexus, though, they have it on the ES, and that's the only thing they have it on. The rest of them are going to come next year. Lexus is starting now to engage. Toyota was away from it, but they are this year. Yeah. So it, we, we've There's driven the market. We uh, Apple users. When you go in, you got to ask. And they say no, I just walk right out. I said, wait, wait, our system. I said, hey, I'm glad you like your system. Bye. <laughs> So I got two minutes for questions.
just a comment. I didn't yes. know we even had an app. I mean, a uh, location on the uh, on our iPhone to to yeah to make adjustments. And I've never looked at the looked it up on the computer. It is so intuitive to use. If you use an iPhone, it's simple. It it's a great, and it goes from one car to the other. You rent a car. You go to your. It's I I've gotten into people's cars. And I've loaded it up, and they say, how did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Well, I, I, uh, while you were talking, I looked. If you go to the App Store on your iPhone and search for CarPlay, you get quite a list. You do get quite a list. You can access two. There's multiple choices. One is just CarPlay and another one is CarPlay navigation. And you get a lot of choices. Good. Good. Well, uh, that's a good point. I appreciate that. Thank you very much.